Hey everybody and welcome back to my kitchen. It doesn't matter what size your kitchen is or what it looks like or even if you like to do a lot of cooking or not. The kitchen holds a special place in all of our hearts. All growing up I spent a lot of time in the kitchen with my mom whether she was helping me with homework, planning parties, or making delicious food. To me, the kitchen is the heart of the home. Whether you love to cook a five course meal or just a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, every kitchen needs a couple tools to function. Today I'm gonna show you my top tools that I have in my kitchen and that I think every kitchen should have. Let's get started. To start out, I think every kitchen should have sharp knives. One of my favorite knives is just the basic chef knife. Everyone should own one of these. And before purchasing any knife, I think you should hold it in your hand and get a feel for it. And when holding a chef's knife, you grip it just right above the handle with your thumb and your pointer finger right above the handle and then put your fingers on the handle. That way when you're chopping, you have a little bit more control. This is one of my favorite knives. The second knife I think everyone should own is just a basic paring knife. It's good for chopping small items or peeling a potato or an apple, but everyone should own a paring knife. The third knife I think everyone should own is a serrated knife. It's used for slicing bread. I use it for slicing tomatoes but everyone should own a serrated knife. So if you're starting out and you have a small budget or you don't know what to get, start out with just the three knives, the chef's knife, the serrated knife, and the paring knife. Make sure you can get um, the most expensive knife that you can afford. That way they'll last a long time and they will hold their edge. The second item you need is a nice cutting board. I like to use a big, solid wood cutting board that gives me a lot of surface area. I also like to use a plastic cutting board so I can throw it in the dishwasher, I can pick it up easily and go over to the pot and put things in or whatever. If your cutting boards are on the counter and they slide around, you can take a wet paper towel, stick it under your cutting board, then when you put your, your cutting board down, it won't slide and it's much safer. The next thing I would suggest having in your kitchen is a nice set of mixing bowls. I like these bowls because they come in a variety of sizes. They also have this nice little lip that I can pour and a great handle that I can hold on to. I would suggest getting a set that has different sizes so you can use them for different reasons. I like to own liquid glass measuring cups because I think it's easier to measure liquid. There's nothing worse than having one of these and trying to go from the sink and not spill. I like to have these in different sizes. This one's a smaller one, a medium one, and a larger one for different volumes that you're measuring out. These are also very good. I like to have the metal ones. I think they last longer, they're more durable, they're just, they're more sturdy. But I like to use these for my flours, my sugars, and everything else that's dry. I also have these metal measuring spoons that go up to a tablespoon. I think every kitchen should have a nice set of measuring spoons. All right, now let's talk about pans. If you're just starting out, you'll probably want to start out with a non-stick so things don't stick because that will make you angry if your food is sticking. So I just recently purchased these Cathalon Premier non-stick stackable pans. That's a mouthful. But I love these pans because look at these lids. You wouldn't even know that that's a lid. And they just stick and you stack on top of each other and I have a whole set under my cupboard like this tall. They're awesome, check them out. But they are non-stick, so you don't wanna use any type of a metal utensil. Use a spatula or wood or it can scratch the non-surface. Along with my non-stick pans, I also have these traditional pans that I really love. They come in different sizes and shapes and they're used for different varieties. I would recommend getting a nice pan that has a nice solid bottom that helps control with the heat. I love having a kitchen scale and I recommend that every kitchen has a kitchen scale. I use this all the time. I actually get made fun of because I weigh out my cookie dough so that all my cookie dough cookies are the same size. 
There is a difference between volume and weight, and you have to make sure that you're being accurate when you're weighing out something, because not everything is the same in volume as it is in weight, especially when you're baking. So if you don't have a kitchen scale, go buy one today. All right, let's talk a little bit about tools. I love wooden spoons, especially for my nonstick pan so they don't scrape. I also use this for when I'm mixing bread by hand. They're sturdy, I love wooden spoons. Get a variety of rubber scrapers. They're perfect for when you're scraping down your cookie dough or making frosting. I love spatulas, especially for when you're flipping eggs. You don't wanna break your egg halfway through because you have a flimsy spatula. Make sure you get a good set of tongs so that when you're flipping that food over, you're not burning your hands. I like these because they open and close. Open and close really easily. I love variety of sizes of whisks for different reasons. If I'm mixing something small or something really heavy, I have a variety of whisks. Whatever you decide to use, get a good variety so that you have options in the kitchen. Every sheet pan needs a kitchen, and I have lots of sheet pans in my kitchen. And I recommend that you get a couple pairs of sheet pans as well. I also recommend having a couple sets of nine by 13 glass pans. I use these all the time, whether I'm making a jello, a dessert, or a casserole. Get a good set of nine by 13 pans. Get yourself a good meat thermometer for when you're cooking those delicious steaks. There's nothing worse than when you overcook it. I have a digital one and I have an analog one. I also have this new one that's connected to Bluetooth so I can connect it to my phone and it has this long cord so I can stick it in the oven and know the temperature on the outside or on my grill. Whatever kind of thermometer you choose, make sure you know how to read it accurately so that your food comes out perfect temperature. Get yourself a good crock pot. They're perfect for when you're on the go. I throw in something in the morning and then I come home at night and I have dinner on the table. I love having this food processor. It's perfect for when I wanna chop up nuts or make a great salsa. This is a great blender. I love this Blendtec blender. I use it for smoothies, soups, sauces, ice cream, and I love it because now I can make baby food for my little kids. Life is already hard enough. Don't make it any harder. Get the right tools for your kitchen. Leave a comment below telling us which tool you can't live without. Remember to hit that subscribe button with the bell so that you can be notified when we upload our next video. Remember to hit that thumbs up if you liked this video. We'll see you next time. Because for the tongs, I have to open and close. <laughs>